It all started with a an email from Terabikes, or better, an opportunity, a chance to work on a dream project for a dream bike brand, the freedom of designing and building what an electric mountain bike should really be, a reliable, powerful and lightweight system, a custom machine built just to have fun. This was the vision, and this is how I brought it to reality. With the concept down, the first thing to do was to sort out the main components needed. We confronted on lots of possible solutions, but in the end settled on using a powerful 2.5 kW brushless motor, paired with a 10 to 1 heavy duty planetary gearbox. The two will be connected by a belt reduction and will be mounted below the bottom bracket, using a series of CNC machined parts. With the main layout sorted, I started designing. This took a few months for a total of about 100 iterations to get to the final design, ready for production. At this point we ordered all the components and started machining the parts for the first prototype. While waiting for the parts I received the frame Lorenzo sent me, we decided to design the first prototype around the Codadura Trail frame. Although the final idea is to fit this motor to the much more capable full suspension Aria frame. This is for sure the highest quality frame I have ever owned. The chrome finish makes it look stunning, it's very light and really feels like a quality handmade product. Tell me that doesn't look amazing. A huge thanks goes to Lorenzo for creating this beautiful bike and giving me the opportunity to work on this project. All the Terra bikes are handmade in Tuscany and you can find their website at the link below. Having spent nearly six months designing this motor allowed the assembly to be quite relaxing, with every part perfectly fitting with the rest, creating a premium product that nicely complements the handmade and boutique feeling of the bike it will be mounted to. One last thing to sort out are the cranks that are now linked directly to the motor and can't stay still when it is spinning, making the bike quite unsafe and not very easy to ride. To solve that issue we bought a trial crank set which has a freewheel thread on the drive side. This allows me to use a freewheel with an adapter to mount a chain ring, letting the chain spin freely with the cranks staying still. The adapter I bought uh, unfortunately wasn't the right size to fit uh, to the freewheel, so I had PCBWay make a custom one out of a 7075 aluminum. 
PCBWay is my go-to website for high-quality on-demand manufacturing. They offer a wide range of services from metal and plastic 3D printing to PCB making and CNC machining. They offer very fast turnaround times with low prices, so check them out at the link below. With also the crank set sorted, the first prototype is finished and working very nicely. Fortunately, everything went extremely smoothly, with even Lorenzo, the owner of Terra Bikes, being very surprised by the results of this first prototype. We'll for sure need to fully test it to see how it holds up to the test of time and how it performs compared to other of the shelfy bikes. The first tests I did were some simple afternoon rides on the mountains near my house. Nothing too demanding, but still plenty enough to get a nice understanding of this motor's capabilities. Having used the VESC as the controller allows to connect the bike to a smartphone, giving real-time data readings about every aspect of the motor, from wattage to battery consumption and temperatures. This also provides easy access to an overwhelming amount of settings to tune the motor power and behavior. Right away I noticed amazing power when limiting it to 450 watts. It unfortunately presented quite a bit of a high pitch noise, indicating that the motor wasn't working optimally. Checking the real-time data I noticed that the motor couldn't really keep up with my pedaling cadence, and this resulted in the motor constantly running at around 100% duty cycle, far away from the ideal 80%. This meant that the reduction from the motor to the crankset was too high, making the motor physically unable to spin faster than I was pedaling, therefore cutting assist at around 70 RPMs at the cranks, which isn't much at all considering that the standard pedaling cadence is between 60 and 90 RPM. Solving this issue was as simple as changing the belt reduction from a 3 to 1 to a 2.25 to 1 by swapping the 15 teeth pulley with a 20 tooth one. This allowed the motor to run much happier, providing astonishing amounts of power ready to help you at the twist of a throttle. This system has uh, probably enough power to turn this bike into an electric motorcycle, due to the 2500 watts of max power it can output. But uh, to avoid any damage to the gearbox or bike transmission, we decided to cap the wattage to 500 watts preserving range and minimizing wear on the components. Speaking of range, this bike allowed me to ride a 25 km loop with 850 meters of elevation, with the motor running constantly at 500 watts. The 850 meters of elevation is uh, an amazing result, considering the tiny 350 watt hour bottle sized battery powering this bike, and considering that about uh, half of the climb was on steep technical trails, which definitely doesn't help the range. One nice aspect of using such small and lightweight batteries is that you can easily carry an extra one in a backpack and swap them out in the middle of the ride, giving near 60 km of range and also the ability to climb about 2000 meters of elevation. Another benefit to this system is noticeable going downhill. In fact, removing the battery allows the bike to feel basically the same as an analog Codadura trail, with only the 2.5 kilos of the motor making the bike feel slightly heavier. This bike weighs in fact just 19.5 kilograms with the battery mounted and 15.5 kilograms with the battery removed. Consider that I'm running a quite a budget downhill focused build and I'm sure that with some uh, XC components a few kilograms could be definitely shaved off. Being this the first prototype there are obviously some slight issues, first being the motor uh, overheating, probably for the lack of ventilation. It isn't uh, that bad since the motor runs happily for about 20 minutes of climbing after which it reaches about 85 degrees, causing the controller to limit the power at around 400 watts to keep the temperature under control. The other issue is that since the motor hangs below the bottom bracket, it is prone to getting hit by rocks. I've already smashed it a few times, quite hard actually, and I must say that even though that's not ideal obviously, it held up completely fine, without any major damage. The last potential issue is that uh, the controller box is not waterproof, 
Even though it's very well protected, some water could still enter via some holes in the case. All things considered, I'm extremely pleased with this project. Considering that it's the first prototype, it all went very smoothly and turned out better than I expected. Lorenzo approved it and was uh, as impressed as I am with it. We will definitely continue working on this concept, improving every aspect of it, making it stronger, lighter and more powerful, to get a final product that will be hopefully be fitted to the full suspension Electrica frame, to get an absolute beast of an e-bike that will surpass any other model available, in terms of power, efficiency, reliability and simplicity. I will catch you in the next one!